The second part of the exponential functions that we're going to talk about is exponential decay. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to model exponential decay. And remember the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay is that exponential decay is going to decrease, like this graph right here, it's going down. Um, remember an exponential function has two parts, the a and the b. The a is your y-intercept, your b is your growth factor. And in order for something to be decay, your growth factor has to be greater than zero, but less than one. So something like a half here, or we're going to look at one later today that's like 0.95. But those are exponential decay. So if we think back to what we've talked about here, the growth factor of this is 0.95, which means that 95% of whatever we're talking about is left after every year or whatever the story tells us. And it crosses the y-axis at 3. So we can look here and see the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay. Remember, growth had to have a growth factor greater than 1, and it couldn't equal 1. Because the thing that happens when something equals 1 is 1 to any power is just 1. So you get a straight line like this. So the graph below shows an exponential decay relationship. We need to find the decay factor in the y-intercept and then make an equation for it. So remember our equation is going to look like this, where this right here is our y-intercept and this is our decay factor. So the y-intercept is easy to find, it's just where it crosses the y-axis and in this graph it's 300. So, so far I know y equals 300 times something to the x power. Now to figure this out, we need to say, how can I jump from 0, 300 to 1, 100? So if you need to, you can make a nice little table with this. And the next one's 2 and 33 and a third, and we could keep going. But I want to know, what am I multiplying by to go from here to here and here to here? So we started with kind of an easy one, but remember you can always go backwards and just divide them so you get one third. And then make sure that makes sense. If you take 300 and multiply it by a third, you're going to get 100. And 100 multiplied by a third, you're going to get 33.3 repeating. And then we'd get 11 and 1 ninth, and then 3 and 19 twenty sevenths, and we could go on forever. So our decay factor is going to be one third. And you should write it as one-third rather than 0.3, because those are two very different numbers. Oops, let's go back, box it up. So let's try this one. Since 1980, the number of gallons of whole milk each person consumed in the United States each year has decreased by 4.1%. In 1980, each person drank an average of 16.5 gallons of whole milk. Write an equation to model the gallons drunk per person. So we have our equation, and we know that we started with 16.5. Now the decay factor we have to think about, if we just plug in 4.1%, which remember is 0 0.041, that would mean that every year it only has 4.1% people drinking milk where this is saying that the number of gallons has decreased by this. So what we always have to think is that you start with 100%, or you can say just 1. And if it's something's decreased by this, we want to subtract. So we end up with a growth factor, or a decay factor, however you want to say it, of 0.959 which means that even though it's decreased by 4.1%, that about 96% of people are still drinking milk every year. So once we have this, we can use our equation to find the approximate consumption per person of whole milk in the year 2000. Now we've done problems like this before. We don't want to plug in 2000 because this says since 1980. So if we stop and think, there was 20 years that went on between that, those, and that's what we're going to plug in for our x. So we have y equals 16.5 times 0.959 to the 20th power. 
And then we can just plug this into our calculator. And we end up with 7.14 gallons. So we're going to talk about half-life. So you've already talked about this in your science class. So let's apply it to math. The half-life of radioactive substance is the length of time it takes for one half of the substance to decay into another substance. To treat some forms of cancer, doctors use radioactive iodine. The half-life of iodine-131 is 8 days. If a patient receives 12 millicuries of treatment, how much iodine is left in the patient after 16 days? So think about after 16 days, two half-lives have gone on. That means we're going to cut it in half twice. So if we start with 12, the first time we cut it in half, they have six, and then the next time they would have three. So after two half-lives, there are three millicuries left in the patient. Now, we could always do this, just making a table, thinking about it, but we like to assign equations to things. So the second you see half-life, you know your equation is going to look something like this. However much you start with times one half to the power of x. So remember, just like any other equation that we've done, this is how much you start with, and this is the number of half-lives. So, um, same problem, how many half-lives occur in 32 days? So if we come here, it says that the half-life is 8 days. So if we have 32 days, we can divide it by 8, and that's 4 half-lives. So let's say I start with a 50 millicurie sample of this iodine. How much would be left after one half-life and after two half-lives? So let's make a table. So zero half-lives, I start with 50. After one half-life, I'm going to cut it in half to get 25. And after two half-lives, I'm going to cut that in half to get 12.5. So after one, it's 25 millicuries. And after two, it be 12.5. So here's a new problem. Cesium-137 is a half-life of 30 years. Suppose a lab stored 30 millicuries in 1973. How much is going to be left in 2003 and then 2063? So let's write an equation. I see half-life, so I know it's going to look like this. And then we started with 30 millicuries. So here's our equation. Remember that this is number of half-lives and not number of years. So when I ask how much of the sample will be left in 2003, between 2003 and 1973, there's been 30 years. I'm not going to plug in 30 here. I'm going to plug in 1 because that's one half-life. So we can kind of do this one in our head. 30 times a half is 15. So 15 millicuries will be left in 2003. And then in 2063, so we could think about it or we could do some math to back it up. That's been 60 years, which is two half-lives. So remember, don't plug in 60 up here. Plug in two. So that means that we're gonna take 30 and one half squared is one fourth. And if you cut 30 into fourths, you end up with 7.5 millicuries. So you have a problem to try on your own. Make sure you write down any questions you have, and we can go over it in class. Enjoy your night.